Varsity Club, welcome back to another classic. Look, we are fresh off a Super Bowl. A Lombardi is ours. It's about time. But if you win a Super Bowl, you care about one thing immediately after. Well, not celebrating and drunk, stumbling through a crowd and having someone hold you up, <clears throat> Tom Brady. You care about trying to repeat. To do that, you gotta have a solid offseason, an incredible offseason. It starts now. So first things first, we're gonna check out the retirements for this year. Again, Brett Kern, Austin Blythe. Nobody's really jumping out Jarvis Landry. Okay, that's a big one. Tyron Smith, Kyle Van Noy. Uh, let's see, nobody else. Khalil Mack, wow, okay, that's a big one. Khalil Mack retiring is an absolutely huge one. Mitchell Schwartz as well. Russell Wilson retired. We're seeing a lot of the big name guys that a lot of us grew up with or that are big in real life now. DeAndre Hopkins retires. Okay, there's some there's some big names here for sure. Uh, the rest of these guys look to be just being re-signed. So we've got most of the retired players. That's kind of crazy. Now we had a couple of contracts we ultimately had to figure out here at the end of the year. Will Reddick we resigned? David Wright we told no. Sean Dion Hamilton is a guy that I wanted to resign, but it just doesn't make sense with how much depth we have a linebacker. So we had to let him go. The salary cap's getting kind of tight. We'll talk about that in a sec. Hines we let go. Felix Towns we resigned uh, to a two-year deal. Tedrick Thompson is gone. Uh, Demarius Driver, we resigned. And then Ross, Chase Ruye, TJ Glover, Kerry Turner, Malcolm Harrison, we resigned. And then Sean Davis. Those guys are out of here. Some big names, some guys we loved, but it's time to move on. So the big issue for us right now is that we have about 9.47 million in cap space. The rookie reserve is a little over 7.5 million. So what we can actually do, there's not a lot. But if we go ahead and look at some of our contracts here. There's some guys I think we got to kind of look at getting rid of this year. So Chase Young is commanding 107 million. And if we look at what Chase Young has recently done, yes, he's a high overall rating. Yes, he's been impactful, but he had 10 and a half sacks, then 13 and a half sacks, and then he fell off this year. I'm a little nervous about Chase Young. We've had two really good years from him. But other than that, we've had nothing that's really crazy. It might be time to move away from him, especially considering how big his contract is. If you look at some of our other guys here. Trey Sanders, who's been a primetime player for us. Deron Payne, again, another guy who's 29, but he's still been very, very good for us. And he's in the last year of his deal in 2026. We gotta figure out if we wanna resign him, see what kind of contract he's ultimately wanting to have, but there's decisions to be made there. Gallup, I think, is still worth it. Again, we have a couple of years left on him. We may try to move him after this next year, depending on how he does, but mentally still makes a whole lot of sense for us. Montez Sweat uh, has got two years left in his deal. There's a lot of guys that have big contracts, but again, Brandon Scherf, his two-year deal. I think Scherf and Chase Young are the most likely candidates to get moved out of here. So the first trade we're gonna make is Brandon Scherf, who again is 34 years of age and is likely gonna have a massive decline going into the all season. So we wanna get him out of our books and off our team right now. Plus he's a big contract. So Scherf, our fourth rounder pick uh, this year and then a third rounder next year for the 16th overall pick from the Bengals. It was like a solid move for us. Now, one thing I'm not really noticing is that we have a massive issue with trying to trade Chase Young right now. Our penalty would be 36 million if we trade him. So we're actually unable to trade him. We had a really good deal with the Falcons to get their draft pick, which is the number one overall pick, but we can't pull the trigger on it because we would go underneath the salary cap. So it's unfortunate, but we got a little bit more salary cap space to play with. Maybe Chase Young, we get a better deal in the off season or later in the next year, but for now, Sting. Something interesting as we go through free agency, we just saw Melvin Gordon actually retire as well. So a new retirement that just came through that wasn't there before. So as you typically might expect, we weren't super active in free agency because our again our salary cap situation is not great. So our only signing was Sean Dion Hamilton, a guy that we let walk in a free agency, and then we ultimately were his only offer. So we brought him back. Around the league, though, a lot of big names were signed. Keenan Wheatley, the massive right outside linebacker, now went to the Chargers. Uh, Josh Allen goes to the Seahawks. Devontae Adams is now with the Browns. Remember, Jarvis Landry retired, so he's hoping to fill a void there. Travis Kelsey saves with the Chiefs. Brian Burns is going to go to Kansas City as well. Walker Jordan goes to Philly. Kareem Hunt goes to Chicago. Uh, you see Steven Adams go to Chicago as well. Jimmy Sherwood, uh, the talented offensive lineman, goes to the Patriots. Dante Rooks goes to the Jags. Alan Baker to the Browns. And the Browns are loading up this offseason. Jack Mason goes to the Jets. James Washington. I mean, there are big names moving the entire offseason. And again, the Browns, another receiver. They're loaded. So we're up here at pick 16, and there's a lot of different options for us. There's a couple of quarterbacks, but again, we're doing really well at quarterback for the first time in a long time. Our running back, our running back situation is good. Tight end, we're good. 
like tackles kind of intriguing uh solid grade he's got you know top five in a bunch of different categories and i went through here and this dude kind of intrigues me a little bit but his ratings aren't super good but he say he's got a minus press a minus man coverage b for zone coverage he's projected to be an early second rounder we have a 32nd overall pick this round so i think we're going to go with callum hughes the offensive lineman Hope that other guys there for maybe uh, our you know end of this round pick we got a 78 overall as a lineman number 11 in true talent we got him at 16. that's a w 66 307 88 strength 86 run block 82 run block power i mean we've needed some run blocking we finally have it his pass block's not great there's some things we can essentially work with him on 80 acceleration 95 injury 90 stamina this is an absolute w of a pick doesn't have a lot of traits really just has predictable player but i'm here for it if you remember that corner that we wanted he's ultimately not here so someone ended up grabbing him i think his name is bj mcneil he's no longer there so there's not a lot of great options for us here there is this guy calvin hughes or matthews who we didn't really go after didn't really scout i'm gonna take a gamble on him he's got second and 40 yard dash vert jump first and broad jump 20 uh, yard shuttle was third bench press isn't great but we need a right hand potentially to maybe replace one of the guys who might be trading and chase young so we took an l we look at his stats 85 speed 86 acceleration so he's fast Block shedding's not great, play rate's not great, doesn't have great power or finesse moves, strength is okay. Okay, he's not the answer. So to recap our draft, we got Callum Hughes in the beginning, 78 overall. Calvin Matthews, we pretty much missed on a 69 overall right end. We got a 70 or 74 overall center in the second round. In the fourth round, we got a 66 overall free safety. A 67 overall left guard uh, in the fifth round sixth round brings us a 68 overall punter who might actually be better than our current punter so we'll probably roll with him and then we missed heavily on jalen henley the very end a strong safety 58 overall who's not really gonna make our team to give you a look at some of the players that are in this draft class though dominic reese was the best player at least from the top from what most people were thinking but he actually gets overshone by Isaiah Monroe, a corner uh, out of Arizona State. He ends up being 84 overall. So you get an 83 overall receiver at the top. Charles Bacon, Mo uh, Moses Beasley. Uh, there's some major players here again. We see Matthews. Nick Matthews, a left guard at 83 overall. If you keep going down, we get an 82 overall in Dewan Morrow. Uh, you get Isaiah Bruce, a right outside linebacker. He's going to be an 83 overall. I kind of want to see that corner. So he goes 25th. He's a 78 overall. This kid is six foot five. Oh, he's got a depth rate too. 6'5, 197, 90 speed, 85 man coverage, 75 zone coverage, 93 acceleration, 83. Ca I mean, this kid is a stud. If you got this draft class, go get BJ McNeil. Dude's gonna be a stud. So as our team heads into the preseason, here's a look at what our roster is ultimately gonna be looking like. We have, I think, one of our better offensive lines in a minute. Not exactly great, but we'll do what we can with them. We have Felix Towns, we have George Reinhardt, Clifton Moreau, Ali Marpet, and our guy forgot his first name, Brad. Samuels on the right-hand side, with Barnett as our tight end, Otis Brown being behind him. Uh, then we have a quarterback, Rashawn Dorsett, and Lindley, both those guys being superstar X-Factors. Gallup is our wide receiver number one. Martell is our wide receiver number two, and he may overtake Gallup throughout the year. At three, of Deontay Arnold, who again is a top receiver for most teams, and we have him at three. On defense, Levi Fryer at free safety, Biddle at right outside linebacker, Bishop and Walls in the middle. It's wild to think that Bishop is actually higher rated than Walls right now. I know, crazy to think about. Deion Hamilton, again, we brought him back, will be left outside linebacker. We may put Walls there a little bit too, but we'll play it by ear. Migas is strong safety. Uh, if we go to corner one, we got Trey Sanders. Sweat will play right end. We got Deron Payne in the middle with CJ Whitfield beside him and Chase Young on the other side with Carlton Davis as our corner for number three, or excuse me, for number two. Number three is Justin Sweeney and then number four would be Christian Norwood. This is the best our team I think has really ever been. We brought in the new punter, Noah Mann, Sean Lane. He gets an opportunity to still be our kicker and then Arnold returning kicks. Punts being Trey Sanders. We'll let him see what he can do ultimately there. Actually, let's make sure that we have Sanders not being there just because that scares me a little bit. We'll try some other people there to see what they can ultimately do, but Arnold will be the main kick returner guy. And I love how that looks. Our team fought to win the Lombardi Trophy for the first time in franchise history. And the only thing that's more difficult than winning it one time is winning it a second time, especially in a row. Can our team do it? 
I think so. But we got to make sure the team stays healthy and keep our eye on the prize. And we don't really get ahead of ourselves because if we do, that trip to the postseason we had last season could be one of our last if we don't get our things going the way they need to be going.